In part 3 of this video series, I'm going to talk about how you can protect your web applications so that your website isn't vulnerable to CSRF attacks. First, I'm going to introduce to you a few concepts that appear to help protect against CSRF, but aren't really effective in doing so. Afterwards, I'm going to explain a few approaches that will help you stop CSRF for good. And if you have seen the last video, you might just want to forward this one to your friends at ING or Google. CAPTCHAs usually provide protection against automated form submission. The problem, however, is that they can be easily circumvented, either with a bot with advanced optical character recognition software or simply with outsourced labor. The attacker could put the CAPTCHA on his own website or outsource solving it to India. Another problem with CAPTCHAs is that they are detrimental to your site's accessibility. The more complex the image is, the less likely it becomes that your users will be able to solve them, for example when you think about disabled people, especially the visually impaired. And the less complex the image is, the easier it becomes to write a program that deciphers them automatically. Captures do provide some security, but depending on the complexity of the image they are rather easy to crack, so they don't solve the problem. And my recommendation is that you shouldn't use them if at all possible. A second approach would be to completely switch from a GET to POST request for every action that is not simple information retrieval. While this would prevent flyby attacks, that's all this, this, would, <laughs> that's all this would accomplish. An example of this would be where a user gets deleted with a simple GET request and the attacker posts an image tag whose source is that delete user address as shown here. When an admin sees that image tag, the user would get deleted right away. And technically, using GET requests for anything other than simple information retrieval goes against the HTTP specification. This approach is definitely recommended, but only because it makes sense from an administrative standpoint and not because it helps with regards to CSRF protection. Using GET requests for things like deleting users is a lot less safe than using POST. Confirmation pages are another approach that's sometimes perceived to be effective, yet isn't. This is because confirmation pages only prevent human error but can't prevent attacks. You can circumvent them by either directly linking to the confirmed page in case of a GET request or by forging the POST request that the user would have to perform to confirm the action. Simply Google for CSRF redirector if you want to find out more on how to easily forge a POST request. All in all, confirmation pages don't help against CSRF. Now, tokens are the solution to your CSRF worries. Tokens are a random string of characters and you have to insert them into every form on your website in order to protect against CSRF. You do this with the following code. Now, since this code is not complete, proper initialization of a session is, is assumed. Please check php.net slash sessions for more information about PHP sessions. Now, the first line checks whether or not a token has been set during the session. The second line creates a new token, and the third line saves the current time. You then insert this token with a hidden form field into your form, as shown here. On the page where you process the form, you check the token with the following code. First, it checks whether or not the token submitted by the page is identical to the token stored in the session for this user. Afterwards, it calculates the age of this token and only allows the form to be processed when the age is less than or equal to 300 seconds. You might want to adjust that upwards by quite a bit, depending on your page. Now, before I talk about this page, I want to clear up a possible misunderstanding. The term session token refers to the fact that there is one token for the entire session of the user, and not to the fact that the token is stored by the session's array. In the previous example, I used one such token that is valid throughout the entire session. Now, the downside to these session tokens is that one token is valid for all forms while the user is logged in. This means that an attacker has access to all forms on the site just by getting one token. The upside is that they are rather easy to implement, and if you are confident that your site isn't vulnerable to access as attacks, session tokens are all you need to protect your site against CSRF. Now, personally, I'm extremely paranoid when it comes to security, which is why I favor a more strict approach that creates a different token for each form. This may sound complicated, 
especially when you consider the fact that you have to store all tokens for forms that a user has visited during a session. This is important because especially power users like you and I often open several pages of a website at the same time. If you only hold one form token in memory, the user will only be able to use the last form he has visited, and this is undesirable. Again, this may sound complicated, but once you have understood the concept behind the implementation, it will sound easier. All you have to do is create a unique identifier for each form on your website and store this in your database along with a random token that has been created, the time the form has been accessed and a unique identifier for the user. When the user has submitted the form and you want to process the data, you look up the token that is associated with this user and the current form, compare it to the, to to the token that has been submitted via the post request and finally check whether or not the token has expired. I chose not to include the full code for this in this presentation so as not to overwhelm someone who is just beginning with PHP, but if there is demand for a more thorough explanation, please don't hesitate to contact me via email and I would be more than happy to upload the code. Ok, the advantage to creating a separate token for each form is that if an attacker finds a access as vulnerability on a particular page of your site and gains access to the token of the form on that page, he will only be able to abuse this form and nothing else. And as I said before, with a session token, the attacker would have immediate access to all forms on the site. This is why I definitely recommend you to take this approach, if at all possible. Ok, one word of, ad of advice. If a token is invalid, don't redirect the user back to the form and pre-populate the fields. This would leave him vulnerable to a so-called clickjacking attack. I don't want to go into detail and explain how this attack works because it's outside the scope of this presentation. But I would recommend you check out the Wikipedia article on clickjacking if you want to know more about it. The thing with tokens is that there is simply no way the user can have an invalid token if you have implemented the token system properly. The token may have expired, but it can't be invalid. So so if there's a case where you have an invalid token, you should just throw an error message, for example with die access forbidden. Another thing that you should keep in mind is that the token should be random. While an approach like using MD5 on the current time sounds appealing, because then, then the token will change every second, it is not random. Once the attacker has figured out that you are using the current time, your tokens will be useless. Adding a salt to the MD5 hash doesn't improve security much because it's just added obscurity and not true security. One possible approach would be to use what I've used in the example. While it's still theoretically possible that the attacker gets lucky and correctly guesses the token, the probability of this happening is, is extremely low and there is no way to do this reliably. Now, this is crucial. You have to make sure there are no access as vulnerabilities on your page. I can't, stress th I can't stress the importance of this enough. If there is a access as vulnerability, it is easy for an attacker to write a piece of JavaScript code, insert it on your page, and have it read the, the current token. While I can't talk more about access as in this presentation, the next part of my video series will cover it in great detail. The good news is that if you have properly implemented tokens, you can stop, you can stop worrying about CSRF right now. As mentioned earlier, there is the possibility that, that the attacker correctly guesses the token, however this is very unlikely. Another way to circumvent token protection would be to access the database and read the current token there. But if your database has been penetrated, the attacker won't need CSRF anymore.